videos i've watched them i've watched the videos how to stab a jew in three easy less three easy steps that's what's happening now last time i was on the savage nation i always love these opportunities we got into a discourse regarding islam and christianity and i i'm guessing billy wants to go down that road billy you're going to get on the air now telling me about the evils of christianity and how there were conversions at the sword etc go ahead you have your opportunity on national radio. Go ahead. Yes, because I am Esatru, which is the original European religion which I practice, which was driven out by Christianity. Where do you suppose Christianity comes from? It does not come from Europe. It comes from the Middle East, the same place that Islam comes from. Uh, actually, is well, it, it comes from the line of Christianity comes from the line of Abraham, the same line that uh, produced the Arabs through Ishmael, and of course it was the Arabs who were a paganistic people who invented a religion uh, via this prophet Muhammad in uh, the 600s. So that's basically it. But if you remember your history, Billy, if you're still there, it was Christendom, it was the state-sanctioned church, and you can say what you want about um, how they followed the Bible or not, but it was Christendom, the state-sponsored church that beat back Islam in its efforts to take over Europe. Are you familiar with that part of the story? Of course you are. Thanks for calling. Rick, WABC, on the Savage Nation. Rick, so we've got all of these refugees coming. We've got lots of, quite frankly, Christian organizations that are taking big bucks to house these people. I had a conversation with an otherwise wonderful Christian gentleman uh, just the other day who says, no, we need to bring them in, we need to show them biblical hospitality, and I'm saying, okay, well, let's bring them in legally, and let's bring them in through a process that makes sense so they can assimilate into this country and become a productive part of the American experience. But that's me. What say you, Rick? Dreaming. You're dreaming. You and I have the exact same view of the whole situation with these supposed, quote, unquote, uh, refugees that he's planning on taking in. I got curious about it the other night, and I remember mm -hmm. this was an event that happened sometime after the World Trade Tower. It was in England. There was several bombings by Muslims, and there was a, a, a lecture that I attended at the time by a professor who studies religions. He's somebody from NYU, and he gave uh, a lecture on the Islamic religion, which I'd long forgotten about. I said, let me listen to that thing. That was a good lecture. And when I listened to it, it was really an eye-opener because they were talking pretty much the same situation as we have now. People were very upset because a lot of people in England had died because of these bombings they had and stuff, and the World Trade Tower thing had happened. Um, he, he said... Do you understand when they kill Christians and when they kill the infidels, what they're doing? He said they're not killing an enemy as we would as Westerners if we go into a place and we kill people. We kill them because they're, they're not. They're trying to help the people that they kill. They view the ones they set on fire, the ones they drowned and photograph, the ones they do, all these horrendous beheadings and all these... <sighs> abominations that, that, that they do, they're, they're viewing that these are helpless souls locked in the grips of Satan, and they're liberating them. They're helping them. It's a, it's a godly thing for them to do. And I said, listen, I said, how much uh, of, of, of people believe that? I said, because you've got these people that are active terrorists, they call them. And, but there's a whole bunch of supposedly peaceful Muslims that live in this country. And he said, I'll tell you something. He said, a very dear friend of mine is a Muslim, and I posed the same question to him once. He said, how many people, because I know there's like a very small, less than 10%, uh, or maybe less than 5%, or less than 1% of all Muslims in the world are actually like uh, Qaeda or uh, the ones that are in Syria right now. Uh, you know, how many other, the other Muslims, the regular Muslims, are mm -hmm. sympathetic towards them? He said, he said, what, and the, his Muslim friend said, what do you think? He said, I would guess like 10% of people that go along with the status quo wherever they're living are sympathetic to what, even though they're not doing these, they're not jihadists, but they're sympathetic to what they're doing. I said, he said, I guess about 10%. He said, you're horribly naive. He said, it's more like 70%. 70% 70 70 are in agreement with what the radicals are doing. 
70 percent, they're, they're here and they're practicing. They're saying, oh, we love the Western ways. We're much more freer than we are under Sharia law. And they're just, comp- you know, waiting, waiting, as they had from the 7th century forward. When, it, when, it, when, they, when Sharia law takes over and the radicals get everything the way they want it, establish their caliphate or whatever they're calling it. Right, they, right. Then they so, will, they'll welcome it. They'll welcome it. They, they, they just... They, well, that, it kind of reminds me, and thanks so much for your call. It's, it's great to hear from you on this, the Savage Nation. It reminds me of a friend... Uh, that I was speaking with one time who was, what, I was speaking to her once about Lebanon, where she's from, and she was a Christian in Lebanon. And again, we had a very, very large population of Christians pre-1975. And um, it was a very progressive, wonderful, beautiful country pre-75. And she said, you know, many of her neighbors were Muslims, and uh, her family were, you know, real, real devout Christian people. And then the revolution began in 75, and the bombs were going off. And she said it was just amazing. She said it was almost like there was this silent noise in the sky. Her friendly Muslim neighborhood neighbors, people that she had you know, gone to school with and played with in the yard, etc., suddenly it was as if the demonic horns came out of their foreheads, and they had imaginary pitchforks, and they became as evil as the radicals. She said it was as if... There was just something that magically happened that awakened them at that moment that called them to become as radical as the radicals. Now, listen, that's just one woman's story, but why wouldn't I believe her, I ask you, on this, the Savage, Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling. It's always a pleasure, as you know. Dr. Savage is going to join us. Uh, you'll hear that coming up in about 15 minutes here on the Savage Nation. It's going to be a very, very important segment. You'll have it upcoming right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-BUICO. Brian Sussman in for Michael Savage. In just a few minutes, you're going to hear Michael talking about this major battle, this epic battle in the war over the future of Western civilization and how it's been lost. And it's really going to tie into his book, Government Zero. So t- stay tuned for that. Some of the other stories in the news today, and it's, there's just a lot of important stuff. Obama's continuing to gut the military. Do you realize since 2010, the Army came out today, they've cut 80,000 soldiers since 2010. They're going to reduce the force by another 40,000. Nearly every Army installation is going to experience reductions of some size. We had a caller earlier we, weren't, we didn't get to uh, have on the program who said, yeah, and you know what is happening in this reduction process? There are a lot of guys who are the very best and brightest who are being fired, and a lot of guys who are the very best and brightest said, I'm out of here. I can't take it. I can't take using our troops as a social experiment. I'm talking about sexual orientation, for example. They're out. They're gone. Then, Obama, $612 billion defense policy bill, ah, vetoes it. This is totally partisan. This was a rebuke to the GOP. Then we find out that Obama today vetoed the pay raises for our troops. If there's anybody on the planet that should be getting a raise, it's our troops. I know they don't do this for the money, but... It's very difficult for a guy with a family to be in the military these days. They need to make more money. They need a retirement system. I mean, you got slackers coming to this country. Um, yeah, no, slackers. They, they might come into this country legally, but they never really work a day in their life. They just get right on the dole. That's, can, we, can we admit that's the def- definition of a slacker? Please, can we at least admit that? Other countries you try to immigrate... They want to make sure you're not going to be a public charge. Here, a ah, public charge. Sure, we want you on the dole because that way we can control you. And the DOJ, Obama's DOJ, drops the IRS probe with Lois Lerner. Drops, drops the whole thing. So those are some of the stories we've been following. John is calling from KSFO in the liberal belly of the beast, San Francisco. John quickly, oh, John dropped, John dropped. John dropped. John dropped. 
Uh, the other thing that was mentioned today by Obama is um, he is really upset that the House wants to make it more difficult for him to close Guantanamo Bay. Can we go to Ed quickly, WABC? Ed, just a couple seconds. Go ahead, please. You've been holding for some time. Yeah, no problem, Brian. Um, I just want you to, uh, to talk about Guantanamo Bay. I mean, the majority of the dialogue concerning Gitmo has really concentrated on the detainees, uh, you know, the prisoners. But, but uh, very, very few times does it, does, it, does it mention anything as a loss of a military strategic point. Which, right. uh, you know, I mean, was, was it's was, hugely was, strategic because John, I mean, Ed, who would love to be able to move into that location? Russia. Come on, let's be plain and simple about this. Russia would love to be there. Thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. You're going to hear the voice of Dr. Savage coming right up on this, the Savage Nation. <music> Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage here on the Savage Nation. Well, you're going to hear the voice of Savage right now. Um, this is from his Tuesday broadcast. It's become a story at World Net Daily. It's getting a lot of reaction, as it should. It has to do with his book, which comes out Tuesday, Government Zero. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. That's the subtitle. Uh, it includes a lot of great information, cutting edge, great commentary, 40 actions to save America including the private sector and the state and the local government. But Savage received an email from someone that he describes as being far smarter than I and very far-seeing. Let's pick it up as Dr. Savage describes the email in question. I got an email from someone this morning who's far smarter than I am. Not easy for me to say that because I believe in myself. I have tremendous belief in myself. I work very hard to believe in that. But I know some few people who are smarter than me, particularly one. And he looks ahead. He's, far, he's more far-seeing than I am. And he said to me, it's over. He said, what Merkel is doing to Germany, what the weakling is doing to England, what the socialist is doing to France, what Obama the psychopath is doing to America, will render this country non-existent in less than 50 years. And I said to him, maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. But the fact of the matter is the world is changing in ways you can never imagine. And think more particularly about what I said to you, in case you missed it. Hitler was a psychopath. No one on earth would disagree with that except Nazis who still exist. What did Hitler do? He invaded other countries to impose his nation's, let us say, distorted values and race upon other countries. That's a given. What is Obama doing? He's, ha he's invading his own country with people of other races and other cultures and other languages to wipe away the predominant language, the predominant culture of his own nation. He is equally mad to Barack. Obama is as equally as mad as Adolf Hitler in that regard. Write it down. Maybe it'll make it to CNN. Talk show host says Obama as crazy as Hitler because he's invading his own country with foreigners. But they better get the whole quote qu correct. And I don't know if they're capable of it. What Merkel is doing is invading Germany with foreigners. She's invading her own nation. Has anybody on earth seen this the way I do? No. And that's why I'm here today. I'm here today for a reason. The reason is to try to awaken you. I know it's very late in the, in the cycle. I realize it's extremely late in the process. I realize that many of us have been sounding the clarion call for years. Not just me alone, many of us. But we've lost the battle. You don't understand this. We have lost the battle. And all you could do now is prepare for the tsunami of foreigners, of illegal aliens, of those opposed to Christianity and Judaism, that the psychopaths who are ruining America are rushing across the borders as quickly as they can to make certain that the white male in particular no longer has a voice in his own nation. I will stand by those words. I swear on them on a stack of Bibles. I said we've lost the battle. And people are calling like crazy, saying things such as, Richard on WBAP, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Make your point, please. God bless you, Michael. I don't believe that you've thrown up your hands. You're the best voice of what's going on, 
Well, know, Richard, I think I think I should have clarified. Richard, you're right for calling me up on that statement. But notice what I said. 